Okay, I'm back. What's up, guys? It's Wednesday, which means we're live and in the flesh. And I'm gonna have a guest, and she's gonna speak, and it's gonna be wonderful. Her name is Lily Ma, and she is a phenomenal person, really sweet, intelligent, entrepreneur, and we did a test run, and it worked, and now she's gonna hop on here, and uh, I'm confident it will work. She's gonna, we're gonna talk about books, the best books. We're gonna talk about mentors and coaches. Hey, Lily, Lily's back on action. So let's get Lily on here. Let me add her. Let's try this again, Lily. By the way, can you hear? Can you guys hear me right now? Um, if you can, give me a thumbs up, or say, write a comment that you can hear me. Let's make that clear first that you can hear me. So if you could hear me, please give me a thumbs up or a comment down below letting me know that you can hear me to see if that's if it's my sound. So can you hear me? What's up, Jamie? What's up, Cyro? What's up, Giorgio? Hey, guys, can you hear me? If you could hear me, let me know. Uh, I want to make sure the audio is working. You can. Okay, awesome. So I'm going to add Lily Ma. It's going to be fun. So bring them on camera. Boom. And let's get you on here. Hi. Hey, Ben. Oh, it yes. Works. So we made it work. This is amazing. <laughs> How are you, Ben? Success. I'm doing wonderful. I'm having a great day so far. It's beautiful here in Miami. How are you, Lily? I am doing amazing. I am so excited that we figured out this whole Facebook Live thing. Perseverance. Yes. Same thing. <laughs> we just said the same thing, but different words. That's, exactly. You know, all the successful people, they don't give up, right? So I don't think it was a failure because we didn't quit. We learned from it and we figured it out. And now That's we're true. Here. We're back. We're back. So, Stronger than ever. Stronger than ever. Thank you for spending the next 30 minutes with me and with anybody else who's joining. Lily's going to share a lot of golden nuggets. I've seen her TEDx talk. I've seen her interview with Tyrone, who's a great friend of ours as well. And you are awesome. I love what you share. I love your mindset. I love your story. So let's, uh, let's hear about you. Give us a brief history of what you went through, your story, and, and what, you're, what you got going on today. Oh, thank you so much, Ben. I really appreciate the introduction and the recognition as well. So just a quick overview of my story. I uh, spent the last 12 years of my life in the corporate world. Um, so I did anything from uh, purchasing all the way to e-commerce to digital marketing. But I knew there was something that was much bigger that I was about. And I knew it, um, it had to do something with helping people transform their lives. And at the time, I had no idea how to even go about doing it. So one thing kind of led to another. It came from my own experience of um, reading different books and um, connecting with different people. I realized that there, was, there were certain things I could have done better. So here's the thing. This is what not to do. <laughs> yeah, <let laughs> from, my, from my own experience is I learned from a lot of trial and error. I did a lot of things. I said yes to a whole bunch of things. And really the only thing that landed was um, figuring out my one word, which was what are we gonna talk about in a bit, is uh, understanding, having the self-awareness to know what it is I stood for. And once I realized that, I know, I know it's a pressing thing that we're gonna talk about, is having the self-awareness to know what you stand for. Mm -hmm. And I realized the thing that I stood for was to be extraordinary. Like, no wonder my life seemed terrible because I was living a pretty mediocre life. Um, on the surface, it seemed great, but I knew there was something much more. So once I figured that out, I started doing bold things. I started my own business. So right now I have a coaching practice and also do some speaking as well. And uh, what I do is I help people transform. I help people build extraordinary lives and businesses. So that's a quick Quick thing, and then if you want to pull out any of those aspects, I'll be happy to elaborate. Yeah, I love that you help people live an extraordinary life because that's that's your one word, right? Yes, it is. Extraordinary. So I want to talk about that. Let's talk okay. about the, the one word. How, how do people determine what it is they're a stand for, and what is this concept behind the one word? 
The concept behind it is building self-awareness. I think a lot of the times um, when you ask someone what is it that makes them come alive, it's very difficult for them to even answer that question. Mm -hmm. Because I think people have spent too much time living their life for someone else, whether if it's their parents, whether if it's for, the social, for social media, whether if it's their spouse or partners, people don't have the awareness of what really makes them happy and what drives them. We all have a figure out what that is. You can bring that into your life. And, and for me, if I'm not, if I'm living a mediocre life, however that looks like for me, or if I'm not going out there and doing bold things, it doesn't make me feel great. And automatically I am going to not perform as well as I would. So understanding what that core value is, sorry, my phone is about to die, um, is very important. And we could go through the series of exercises if you like, or we could even, I could even send over some of the exercises to you that you could put into your community as well, however you yeah, wish I, I we could love, do that. Yeah, I, I would love for you to go through the exercises now actually, but I have a okay. question before we do that. Because you, 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 how old are you? If you don't mind me asking, I'm 33. Yeah, so you're you're young. You're you're actually my age. I'm 33 as well. Nice. And a lot of pe most people, they don't really have that self awareness, right? They don't really figure it out. They don't. They're actually in a prison, but they don't know they're in a prison, right? And how do you escape a prison if you don't know you're in one? Mm -hmm. So, how, what is it that shifted for you that that was like, okay, I'm living an ordinary life, and I'm, I'm a stand for extraordinary, but you had that self-awareness. You said books helped, but was there like an like a moment of like, you know, this is yeah. not the life I want to live? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was a series of events. Like so, it was. Um, you know, I, this is what I think. It, yes, it does take that one moment that makes you realize that your life needs to change, but it's a series of small things that builds up to that moment. So. It was just, I was just numb for the longest period of time for, for almost a decade. I was just kind of living this, this life. I would wake up in the morning, I would go to work, come home, do it all over again, do it all over again. And I had a great job. I had an amazing job that paid really well. Um, that moment was when I had someone really close to me die. And you know, when, when, when someone, when someone passes, you kind of think about their life. You're like, Oh, they lived a great life. They had all of these memories. I couldn't, I couldn't even mention one thing that they did for themselves. And they just complained all the time and they just lived a life of regret. And I realized for myself, I was going down the same path. I was like, I'm doing the exact same thing. And at the time I was in my late twenties, like I'm going down the same path and I, I can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't fantasize about constantly getting hit by a bus because I hate my life so much. So something had to change. And that's when I took the responsibility. That's, you know, it's taking 100% responsibility for your life as well, because I was blaming it on other things. Well, you know, I don't know what to do. I mean, I didn't, I don't have entrepreneurs in my life. Um, I don't have access to certain things. What do I know? But I had to take responsibility and I had to figure things out a lot on my own and then later on I was able to get a mentor as well who helped me out to shortcut my path but realizing your rock bottom that's a thing because we all have different rock bottoms and we have to hit it at some point I call it the bus of change in my TED talk it's like don't wait for that bus of change to hit you that's first thing and then the second thing is take a hundred percent hundred percent responsibility for your life which is what I did I love that so much I could totally relate to you. I actually have a t-shirt that I have on the back that says I am responsible. And it's so true. The moment that you accept 100% responsibility is the moment instantaneously that your whole life shifts, yeah. right? It, it's impossible yeah. to feel angry and resentful and take re responsibility at the same time. You know, once you say those words, like I am responsible, like, oh my God, I have control over my life. You know, not, not the media, not our president, not the news, not the traffic oh or whatever gosh. it is. We were blaming it on but but me so yeah. that's amazing i love that story you know it's uh i acknowledge you for having the awareness and then you said taking bold action right i think you had mentioned that like you took bold what what, what were some of those bold actions 
uh, some of the hold well, I quit my corporate job to start my own business without actually having a business plan. So that was, wow. a, that was huge. Uh, it was, um, and that was a year ago, actually a year ago, I decided to quit my corporate job and, um, Evan Carmichael, who's my mentor and my investor, he, he said, Hey, you know, I, I love what you're about. I know you're really hardworking. I know anything that you do, you're going to, you're going to succeed because of your sheer work ethic. Let's do something together. And uh, he asked me at around 7 p.m., I think. And, uh, and at, at midnight, I said, let's do it. And we, our plan was to make a plan. Our plan was to make a plan because we bet on, I bet on myself. I knew I could do it. And he bet on me because he believed in me. And, um, and a year later, I have done so many things. I have a successful coaching practice now. I've done a TED Talk. I have, I have my own mastermind group that I run as well. I'm meeting wonderful people like you. And that was me taking a giant leap of faith. That would be the biggest thing I've ever done besides wow. falling in love. Wow, I love it. I love all that. Uh, yeah. So you, so what I'm hearing is that you had a great job. You had oh, yeah. a great career ahead of you. Oh, yeah. But you realized you had the awareness that you wanted more out of life. And yeah. you had a coach who gave you that, that instilled that confidence in you and saw something that you necessarily didn't see. And then you took a bold action. And then you figured it, the rest out, right? You yeah. committed, and then the rest came out. You just figured it all out. That That's like, so amazing i really acknowledge you for that and anybody who's watching this or going to watch this and if you are have a career and it's not like something that you see yourself being at for the next 20 to 30 years like get in touch with willie like have a conversation where she'll she's within the same situation and look what she did and look what she's up to she's up to extraordinary things so that's amazing and um i want to just take this second to say hey to tyrone beatrice amanda Beautiful. rudy Thomas, what's up? Kyla, hi. Jacob, Radis, Jerlyn, Bo, Mario, James, Amanda, everybody's on here. Giorgio, Jamie, Tyro. Thank you guys for joining us today. So I want to hear from you. Uh, mm -hmm. You talked about the one word. You said ex mm -hmm. extraordinary is your one word. Yes. How does yeah. somebody figure out what their one word is? Sure. Um, so one of the exercises that I go through is a happiness exercise. Uh, it's really getting, so first, this is one of the most important thing that people will ever do in their lives. So really take, chunk out your day, take a moment to really go to a quiet place that you could actually do these exercises and have no distractions at all. So happiness exercise is making a list of everything that makes you come alive and feel fulfilled and happy at the utmost level. Um, and really finding the connective tissue between all of them. Because there is something that connects them all to you in your eyes, right? Not to other people's eyes, but in your eyes. And once you figure out what that is, like for me is extraordinary. For someone else is belief, like Evan Carmichael, his one word is believe. Um, and everything sort of just, just narrowing it down. So a couple of practical things. Some questions that you could potentially ask yourself is like your favorite book. What is your favorite book? Uh, who's your favorite teacher? Your role models, who are your role models? Uh, what do you love about your parents? What do you love about, I know you have a girlfriend, so what do you love about your girlfriend? And, um, and just make just a couple of words that, um, that describes that particular thing for you. So what are the three things that you love about your girlfriend? What are the three things you love about that book? And then seeing if there's a common, a common theme, because it could be very similar. And once you figure that out, to just try to narrow everything down, 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 down to one word. And it, it's a core value, so which means that you have to feel it in your core. Like it has to hit you in your core. And I don't know if you have something like that that you're thinking about in your head right now. Is there something? Yeah, uh, abundance. There you go abundance on everything that you were talking about books teachers role models were like See? my relationship abundance yeah. was like the one word that kept popping out right right yeah. e exactly so for you amazing because i think um ben you probably because you've been doing this work for a while you have more self-awareness to understand like that's exactly it for other people it might take six months to a year to figure out 
So understanding that, and even if that still doesn't work, there's like the, the opposite exercise is finding out all the traits that you hate in this world. I know we're all loving people. We don't want to think about hate, but there's certain characteristics that we just don't want to be around. Mm -hmm. So what are those things? And again, finding out the common pattern and reverse it. So if you, if you can't stand um, scarcity, for example, mm -hmm. right? Or greediness or all of that, like what is the opposite of that? And that becomes your one word. That's great. That's so, so good. Uh, those are like golden nuggets, guys. Do, the, do, do this exercise. Take a quiet, uh, some, some time today, five yes. to 10 minutes. And like she said, that connective tissue, I think that's the word you used. Uh, mm -hmm. or, or connective, yeah, that's what you used. Yeah, I love that. Yes. That's, that's so cool, linking it together. Um, yeah. Zeno, hi. Rachel, hi. Tracy, hi. Oh, Tyrone says he loves you. He loves us. We love you too, Tyrone. <laughs> we love you, Tyrone. We Tyrone love is you. man, like such great energy that I get I know. and I see from him. I, I just love it. I love it. So Tyrone, keep doing yeah. what you're doing. Mr. Vitality. Mr. Vitality. What a that's his one word. What vitality is. I think so. I think that's what yeah. he said it was. But don't you, feel, don't you feel more nourished and more vital when you're around him? I do. Yeah, right? I do. All, all the time. Whenever I see him post something, I have to make sure I watch it because I'm always in a better place after I watch it. <laughs> So yeah. it's a little bit selfish on my end, but thank you, Tyrone. And okay, <laughs> I, have, I wanted to ask you, well, we talked about having a coach. You have had Evan, you have Evan as your mentor. Yep. All world-class people have a coach. They're always yep. trying to get better. Yep. Um, how do you find a coach? How do you find a mentor? Look oh. at those hearts, by the way. <laughs> Thanks, Tyrone. Wow. I love it. Um, so the first thing is, um, I mean, you can always hire a coach or a mentor. However, you know, it may not be accessible to everybody in the beginning, especially if you're starting out, you might not be able to afford it. Um, you, could, you could start by, like this is a great example of mentorship right now. Like if, if everyone knows that Ben is gonna go live every single Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, then go on there and ask him a question. That is a form of mentorship and coaching. That's the easiest way to begin with. Um, I love it. On, on Instagram too, if there's an influencer that you really look up to, ask them questions. If they go live, ask them a question. If they do YouTube lives, go ask them a question. I do YouTube lives every single day at 9.30 um, a.m. Eastern Standard Time. People go on there and ask me quick questions. So maybe they're not getting my mentorship as in like I'm, I'm with them 100% of the way, but they're getting that little bit of like, tidbit of information, golden nuggets, they apply, they come back, apply it and come back. So that's a form of mentorship. It's uh, the most accessible. And then the next thing to do is um, you could also reach out to people as well, right? Reach out to them, but it has to be a two way, two way street. It can't be just, can you mentor me? I get people like that all the time. Mm -hmm. Can you please be my mentor? As a, you understand it's like, it's like being married to you for a while. Yeah. There's, there has to be some kind of, um, it has to be a relationship there um, as well. So finding a way you could, how you could add value to them and then finding a way to do it. And one of the main, one of the biggest undervalued form of mentorship is um, books and videos and all sorts of content that's out there. Um, if you think about it, like you have so many books behind you right now. People's lives, their life's work is in that book. You could learn a lot from that. Yeah. I love it. I, I so I'm so with you on that. Like all these books and whatever books you have in your bookshelf on your bookshelf, they're all GPS guides to success, right? We were learning from the mistakes and the successes of all these successful people who are curating it and putting it in a book for us to read and, and, and grow. So every book here is a mentor. Uh, this Facebook live is a is a, a form of mentorship. Your YouTube live video. So you go live every weekday at nine thirty a.m. Weekday and weekends. Oh, that's Look. so awesome. I didn't know that. So guys, Consistency. Well, yeah, I love it. What, where, where can they find you on YouTube? Uh, Lily Ma. Lily Ma. Just, so just that's... type in your name, Lily Ma. Okay. Yeah, so yeah I should check try her out. Also, check out her uh, TEDx video. I'm going to post it in the comments after we're done here. Great okay. TEDx talk, by the way. Uh, how was that the experience? It was good. It was good. Um, I have an opportunity to do it again. Uh, so I'm, I'm kind of thinking whether I should or not, what I have to see. Um, it was a great experience. It's one of those bucket list type things that I always wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And this is great for people who are watching. 
So when I first started doing my bit, so I started my business in May. So it's coming up to one year anniversary now. And I had this vision of myself standing on stage and speaking at TED. And I thought, oh, it's going to be like a year from now. Not a big deal. But my mentor, Evan, he says, why do you need to wait a year? It's like, well, there's a, all the stuff I need to do. He's like, no, you already know the material. You already are doing it. You're already coaching people. Just do it. So I, I applied to 50 different places to do a TEDx talk. And I got in within the first month. Awesome. <laughs> and, and that's the thing with people watching. Don't wait until you're fully ready. When you're 80% sure, just go in and do it. And that. sometimes a mentor has to push you, right? They're yeah. not seeing, you're not seeing something that they're seeing. So that's another thing. That's so awesome. Massive action. You just took massive action. Yeah. You committed and then you figured the rest out once they accepted. That's yeah. amazing. I, I love exactly. that. Exactly. I acknowledge you for that. It's such a admirable trait to just take that massive action. Uh, I have a question. What are mm. some favorite books of yours? And they don't have to be in any specific order, but when I say favorite books, like what books pop in your head right away? Gifts of Imperfection mm. from Brene Brown. That book literally changed my life. So um, speaking of perfection, I used to be, I used to be such a perfectionist and it kind it came down to like the way I see perfectionism is that worrying about the judgment of others. How do I come across to people? Um, am I putting on the right mask? Uh, just constant worrying about the approval of others. Not like I'm very growth oriented. I'm always, every single day I'm growing and I'm going to get better and better and better, but I'm not growing towards perfection. I'm just growing to be a higher level of who I am right now. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's just that constant perfectionism kind of stopped me from doing a lot of things. And it kind of, I also use that as an excuse to not take bold action. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm not ready. Uh, I need to do this. So it was, it was a terrible thing that I was holding on to. So gifts of imperfection completely changed the way I looked at my life. And it was the first book that I read towards my journey of personal development. That's awesome. I, just the title alone, I got value from. So yeah. when, what I learned from one of my mentors, uh, Grant Cardone, Mr. 10X, is nice. he said that perfectionism is just a fancy word for procrastinator. Yeah. So it's exactly what you just said. And, yeah. uh, and speed of implementation, right? Once you have an idea, or you want to do something like the faster yeah. you could start implementing it, the faster you'll start to get success. Now you'll yeah. stumble and there'll be setbacks, but it's never about that, right? It's about learning from it and just mm -hmm. keep going. So I love that. So gifts of imperfection. Is there any other book? One more book that comes to mind? Uh, well, there's an, a great book called your one word mm. <laughs> written by Evan Carmichael. That's yep. a, no, I, I'm not, I'm not saying that because, uh, I because I work with them. It's a great book. And, um, it's the first third of it is a lot of personal development. So understanding your one word and how to apply it into your life. But the two thirds of the book is really building a business around your one word. And uh, I know you're an entrepreneur. We probably have a lot of entrepreneurs watching. It's uh, it's a very practical um, manual in creating a business that really matters because that's what we want. Well, yeah, sure. We could build a multi-million dollar business, which we're all going to do. And at the same time, you want to do something that matters, something that you care about, something that has meaning. So that book is great for that as well. Um, do you want more books? Um, yeah, if you have another one, well, I'll take it. Four Hour Work Week is, um, is something that I read a long time ago. And um, have you read it before? Have you? Yeah, yeah. I okay. love Tim Ferriss. I love I love anything from Tim Ferriss. So that yeah. book actually has helped me a lot in implementing certain things to make my company more efficient. Uh, of course, Tim does not believe in working only four hours a week. And I'm sure right. you don't and I don't. But there's a lot of efficiency there as well. Yeah. So you're, I love that you said that because the title might confuse somebody and think that like, you know, just work four hours. And, but it's more about like delegating and um, working on your high priority task and not low priority exactly. type of thing. Exactly. That was actually one of the first, one of the first, probably like the first 10, one of the, one of the 10 books that I started to read when I started to mm -hmm. go through self-development. It yeah. was that one and like the slight edge and think and grow rich and a few others. But Tim Ferriss was the one that was like, this guy's awesome. And I started getting all his stuff. So that's really cool. So I'm going to add gifts of imperfection 
and also Evan Evan's book, your one word uh, mm -hmm. to my to my shopping cart, to my Amazon shopping cart. I'm gonna get through them, and I'll let you know what I think about them. Lovely, lovely. Yes, I love it. Okay, we have about five minutes. Do you have five minutes? Okay. Of course, I. Have I wanted five to minutes, ask yes. you if somebody has bad habits, right? How, how do you swap out those bad habits with good habits that are gonna take you to accomplish the things you wanna accomplish out of life? It starts with your environment. So uh, making things automatic. So the first thing, uh, first thing first is the habits that you have, understand what their triggers are. So let's make it a little bit more practical. Um, what are some of the bad habits? Like say procrastination is yeah. a bad habit because uh, it comes up a lot. So, under, so understanding when are your triggers of procrastination? Do you procrastinate first thing in the morning? Because I had, when I was doing my live stream, someone says I procrastinate waking up early. <laughs> 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 Great, okay, so that's a thing. Um, if that's a thing, then set up your alarm and, and create healthy habits by just putting it somewhere else in the room so that way you have no way of procrastinating. Yeah. Um, another thing that I do with certain bad habits with my clients is really raising the stakes. Because some people might say, oh, it's not a big deal. I'm going to put it off by another day. I was like, I just like really raise the stakes by making the regret of not doing the thing so painful that doing the thing is no longer that painful. Mm. Like Love think it. about it as like someone was procrastinating writing emails that I was working with because, uh, you know, there's also deep rooted issues that we could go into as well. But uh, just talking about habits is I said, what if you were a hostage negotiator and you writing the email saves people's lives? Like, how would you look at it now? like really raising the stakes. I know yeah. they're like, it's crazy, but no, but you are saying like the guy I was talking to, he's a fitness coach and he had to write emails to his clients. They're like, well, you are saving people's lives. You, you, their health is in your hands. Like, well, why are you not writing them emails? That's right. So, so raising the stakes. I love that. I love that. So looking at the opposite side of what would happen if you don't yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so great. And 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 the morning um, hitting the snooze button was was also for me a, a problem. You know, I corrected it, but you snooze, you lose, right? We hear that all the time, but it's true. I mean, even science even shows that if you hit that snooze button, you're just gonna get like shallow sleep. You'll get instant satis satisfaction, and then you'll wake up and you're not much more energized. And then you have yeah. your brain is uh, the productivity is decreased for up to four hours by just doing that. So something that I personally do is I have a what's called a sun simulation lamp. And it's kind of like a, a big bulb that I put across my room. And let's say I want to wake up at 630 in the morning, I'll set that book that sun simulation lamp for 630 a.m. And at around 6 a.m. It starts to light up just very slowly. And every minute it'll get brighter and brighter and brighter. And by 630, it's fully lit and it simulates the sun rising. So it's not an alarm clock that just jolts me out of bed and I'm like, ah, oh, where am I? But it's actually like me waking up with the sun, although it's not the sun, but it's, it simulates that feeling. So cortisol comes up slowly, melatonin goes down, yeah. and that works wonders for me. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a really cool hack. I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's super cool. Oh, that's awesome. Amazon. Yeah, you can get it on Amazon. That's it's amazing. Sun simulation, man. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you for that. Um, I want to, I want to acknowledge you and say thank you for the last 30 minutes were wonderful. I learned so much. I learned that taking bold action is where it's at. Like that's where the sweet spot is. As uncomfortable as it may be, which it will be, that's where all the magic is. And you did that, you took bold action and you made a decision that, you know, I'm living an ordinary life. I have a good job, a great job and a career ahead of me, but I want an extraordinary life. And you made a decision, you had a coach, and you counseled with him and you took that action and now you're changing lives. Like you're living an extraordinary life. You're adding so much value to anybody who was on here had got so much value, no doubt about it. I got so much value from it. Um, I'm excited to collaborate more with you. I'm excited to see your growth on social media. And if there's anything I can do to support you in any capacity, like just know that I'm here to support you. Of course. Well, thank you so much for having me. This is incredible. And I feel like, I feel like there will be a lot of co-creation coming along in the near future. I feel it. I do it's too. Gonna come. I do. I do. Too. So, <laughs> I do. So I we'll do. Talk soon. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Billy. We'll talk soon. Keep doing all the badass things you're doing, and uh, have a wonderful day. Okay. You too, Ben. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. Bye.